And did you stay up late, watch the State of the I Union? I watched as much as I could. Yeah. I watched a little bit of it as mm -hmm. well. But last night, not without a little bit of drama within party lines, Republican Congressman George Santos and Mitt Romney. Yes. Woo, they appear to exchange words. Right before President Biden's speech, Romney appeared to say, you don't belong here to Santos. Uh, when the two made eye contact right in the aisle after the address, Romney told reporters that Santos should have been sitting quietly in the back. Oh. Yeah, sit in the back row, considering the fact that he has all these ethics investigations going on. Now, uh, I think we cut it before it said the last few words that he yelled at Romney on the way by, but it looked like an expletive to me um, that he said to Romney, and I was in shock. I saw him like, wow. He's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's me doing expletives. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like that. Thank you very much, Audio. I love you in there. And I was like, wow, he said some words to him that you, I don't know if you should say on the floor of Congress. He told him to shut up, and then he told him how to shut up. Wow. Or what, what kind of shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <should> yeah. <laughs> partake in. Now, last night was a chance for the president to address the, the nation ahead of what's expected to be his bid for a second term. Now, although it did get heated at times, the president did receive, and this was the best part to me, and surprised me, some bipartisan welcome. Now, the talk last night was uh, about shooting down the Chinese spy balloon uh, off of the East Coast as it traversed our country. The president also discussed the debate ceiling and the Republicans pushed for cuts of social programs, which got some vocal pushback, like literally, you're a lawyer. Uh, other topics included supporting Ukraine, immigration, gun control, and police violence. But you see, uh, that's what I expected is this. Them, the one side sitting down, and looking appalled, and the other side standing up and cheering. But there were at least two times while I was watching that everyone stood up together and applauded our president. And I don't care who the president is or which party it is, I just want to see these dudes get in dudes and ladies getting along. Yeah. Like you guys have to govern us together. You guys have to make our country succeed together. And so, see, this is one of them where everybody got up and they all applauded the president. I was surprised they did it at all because I hadn't seen it in a while. I loved when President Biden came in and he took the podium and one of the first things he said, if not the first, was yeah. I want to uh, congratulate Kevin McCarthy, who's now the new Speaker of the House, and I said civility, civility is has bad. returned yes. and that is great. And then towards the end of the speech, mm -hmm. there were some digs taken yeah. and some boo and I was like, oh, okay, man, ain't so much. Um, I just want to move quickly to where was Marjorie Taylor Greene going in that white, in that winter white fur coat? I Did like, you, I you liked, liked it? I liked it better than boots. I mean, if we're talking <laughs> fashion, I'm down with that way better than the boots. I'll, I'll wear that. Now you win. <laughs> better than boots. You have a point there. <laughs> I mean, All right. yeah, I mean, she's doing her thing. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Such a great callback. You're right, good point. Uh, so there has been question mm -hmm. also, the Republican Party, which way are they going to go? Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, President Trump here, who's former President Trump, who still certainly has his hand in the yeah, party. Absolutely. And then there's certainly a, a, a fraction of the party as well that says, no, we need to go this way. But it seems last night with Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders giving the official uh, Republican mm -hmm. response that perhaps Trump does still have a hold on the Republican Party. She gave the Republican rebuttal to the president's address and she talked about high gas prices she talked about teaching race in schools, mm. and she made references to what she describes as a left-wing culture war. She went on to say that safe communities, more jobs, and higher paychecks are some of the things that are on the Republican agenda. I did understand the national commentary, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, this morning. I didn't see this speech live. Mm -hmm. I did have to go to bed at some point. Yeah. Um, but I do understand that just to see her, and she was the official, again, spokesperson for President Trump, so it does make you think, okay, this is the direction that they're going. Mm -hmm. And when you say you want it to be positive, it just seemed to put us back in that divided place. And that's for both sides. Right. I guess I'm just saying I had this great hope when it started, and by the end, I'm not sure that we're getting close to 
Right. Well, maybe we'll see what she stands for together. on her own outside of his shadow. Yeah. Maybe that's a chance. We'll see what she's talking about. Hashtag the noon. If you got something to say to us, please keep it civil on Facebook or Twitter. We'd love to hear from you.